Welcome everyone, Marcelo is my name. I'm the Niche Fragrance Collector and I'm continuing my conversation on all things Orto Parisi and my deep love for uh, Alessandro Galtieri's work. Now, Alessandro does not do anything just randomly. When I saw the name Brutus, I thought, okay, this is gonna be good masculine fragrance, you know, punchy, punchy. And in preparing this review for everyone, I wanted to explore a little bit more the name of Brutus itself. As I said, with Alessandro, everything is a clue as to what the fragrance is about. And I even went one further and, and thought to myself, is actually the word brutality, is it rooted in something ancient, you know, in Rome or Greece or something like that? The first thing that we think about when you, well, obviously you think Brutus, you think of the guy essentially who uh, was part of the assassination of Caesar. And so you think, you know, this is the brutality component of it. Anyway, 6th century BC, so we're going back into Rome, 6th century, and there was a man by the name of Lucius Junius. Now, his family, they were aristocrats at the time. This is when there were still kings within, the, within that Roman Empire, or within Rome. And there was a, I guess, um, a tyrannical king, um, King Tarquinius was his name. And he wanted the land that Junius' father of uh, the family had. And so he killed the, in front of the kid, he killed his father and his brothers. Now, at that moment, Lucius, behaved as if he was insane. Basically, was looking like he had a, a mental disability. It was at that moment that they actually gave him the name of Brutus. So his name became Lucius Junius Brutus. And Brutus in Latin meant either dull, stupid, or heavy. And so the, the actual terminology of Brutus in fact meant that you were, well, that you were stupid, essentially. Now, it's interesting, as the story goes on, uh, Lucius uh, continued to behave like he was, you know, insane. And uh, eventually, um, at the right moment, he actually grew up in the court of the king, and at the right moment, killed the king. So here's this duality of this individual, or this, this Brutus, where he acted like he was stupid and insane, but in actual fact, he was clever, calculating, and stoic. The Brutus that we all know, the guy who was the final assassin to Caesar, and in a, uh, for those who are familiar with the, the Shakespeare play, and that classic line, essentially what happened there was that uh, the conspirators well, stabbed Caesar, and Caesar turns to his best friend, here's the thing, to his best friend, Brutus, to get some salvation, essentially. And in that moment, Brutus puts a knife into him too. And he says to him, et tu, Brute. You too, you know, are you also part of this thing? So there's that duality again, where uh, here was a person who Caesar trusted, but in actual fact, he was essentially his murderer, Brutus. So with all that in mind, because when I came to the fragrance, I naturally, as I said, I thought of Brutus, the guy who killed Caesar. And so I was expecting a very strong, masculine, super powerful, fill the room, look out, get out of my way kind of fragrance. Um, this is not it. <laughs> this is not the one. There's a fragrance note that a lot of perfumers love using, which is patchouli. Now, one thing that we do know is that Alessandro Galtieri doesn't reveal notes within his fragrances. However, I mean, you can smell things and you know that there are certain elements that are actually in the fragrance. This fragrance here has patchouli in it. And interestingly, patchouli, um, there is a duality to it also, in that uh, there are some elements from patchouli that people absolutely love and are drawn to, and th there's also elements in that patchouli that people dislike. So it's a very polarizing note. My wife hates patchouli, not a patchouli fan at all. Take a fragrance like Psychedelic, which is a glorious patchouli. It's a celebration of all things patchouli. Vibrant, vibrant. Not for my wife. I can't wear that around her. Hachibat. I love Hachibat. Beautiful, aromatic, masculine fragrance. My wife does not like it when I'm wearing Hachibat. And yet, <laughs> she loves this fragrance. I was misled by the name. Um, and also, I'm going to go one further. I was misled too clever little Al Alessandro, by Orto Parisi. So I, I approach all the Orto Parisis as, you know, powerhouse beast mode kind of fragrances. Brutus is the, the opposite of that. Brutus is 
refined. Brutus is uh, classy. It's a, it's a clean gentleman's fragrance. It actually, I'm going to go one further. This fragrance here allows you, your personality, to shine before the actual fragrance itself. So it doesn't, I mean, there are some fragrances that that almost like precede you. You walk into a room and people are like, oh my man, you're wearing, you're wearing Bergamasque or Megamade or something of that nature. Whereas there's a, a subtle confidence that this fragrance just hovers around you and it only, pro you know, I guess I'm, I'm gonna say it only produces itself when you need it most. Let me give you an example. I find that this fragrance here blooms best as my body warms up. If I'm doing something a bit more active, the heat on my body begins to increase. And as a result, the fragrance itself also begins to bloom. So if I were to quickly define this fragrance, for me, it starts on the opening spray, very herbaceous. It has a wonderfully clean, vibrant, herbaceous note. It then migrates to a beautiful, spicy, ambery feel to it. Finally, it settles into a very warm woods. As a whole, it does fall into the woods category. Uh, it is a very woods-based fragrance. Let me dial back a tad. The performance on this fragrance is, on first glance, okay. When I, was, when I first got it, I was wearing it, and I was, to my nose, I was getting a comfortable four hours. And, I'm, and actually, I remember at the time, I'm thinking, what's going on? What's, <laughs> what's wrong with my bottle? Is it broken? You know, because Orto Parisi's will take you to the next day. Um, and so I thought, oh, that's unusual. It wasn't until the example I'm about to share with you that I realized that this fragrance has seven plus hours of longevity on it. So four hours, I'm getting a nice clean. I can detect it on myself. It has a moderate to, well, actually it has a moderate push on it. After four hours, it does become more of a body scent. It doesn't have the same that I'm expecting from an Orto Parisi. However, when I warm up, when my body warms up, the fragrance, it re-emerges itself. You can see that um, I'm a bit of a hand talker, so you can see that I'm a bit of an animated kind of person. I try to contain myself behind this desk and keep myself very still. My hands are the only things that are going crazy. But when I'm telling a story, so um, I, if I'm in with a group of people, and the story requires some level of animation, know that I'm gonna act the whole thing out for you. Recently, I was at my son's house and we were telling a story about, I can't remember what, but anyway, basically it was a very animated story. And I am bouncing around, moving from thing to thing and doing this and doing that and jumping up. Naturally, my body temperature would have increased. When I sat back down, um, and I was probably about a meter or so away from my wife, I sat back down, we kept talking, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, then probably about half an hour later, we said goodbye, got in the car, and I actually got into the car first. Now, my wife is Italian, Argentinian. The way we say goodbye is at least six times. So we'll say goodbye, and then we'll then get to the door, and we'll say goodbye again, another kiss, another hug, then we'll get to the outside, and so it's a long process. Now, I was already in the car. My wife was still saying goodbye. I think she was up to five or six. And finally, she got into the car. As we're driving off, she said, I really like your perfume today. I thought, oh, well, what do you mean? when could you smell it? She says, well, after you finished telling your story and you sat back down, your perfume was very present and it smelled beautiful. So, and I so saw then again, how did you feel? What, what, what did you, what did you, what sort of notes did you pick up? Because I'm thinking, can she detect the patchouli? She's like, no, it's a very clean, very gentleman, a very refined kind of, kind of scent. She said, when you, when I got into the car, the moment I opened the door, the car smelt of the perfume also. This perfume here is your defense line. It's your strength that you need in the right moment. I'm going to say that this would be a classic, perfect fragrance for the office. As people come in closer to your vicinity, they'll detect that fragrance, uh, but you won't necessarily, you know, punch out the whole room with your fragrance. I'm also gonna say that this is a fragrance that will have your back in a difficult situation. You're having tough negotiations, someone's trying to get extra concessions from your budget, if you manage the budget, for instance. In that moment, your body temperature will increase and all of a sudden, Brutus will come forward. They thought that you were a pushover, but Brutus, tells them otherwise. For me, this is primarily a winter fragrance. When the weather starts cooling down, Brutus comes out, and uh, I love, this is my day fragrance. This is something that I wear on a day to day. Um, I love wearing it also, so a full day. I'll wear it at the office, come of an evening, couple more sprays, 
and I'm away again and this will take me for the rest of the day. So let me close off with this level of duality and that's again built into the actual fragrance. If I look at the lid, at first glance, it actually looks like a very weathered kind of leather, like something that's been exposed to the environment, water, etc., and the leather has split. In actual fact, it's a walnut shell as the inlay. And again, this is another classic example of that duality, meaning that leather, pliable, you can do many, many different things with it. Whereas a walnut or the walnut shell, I mean, you try to crack a walnut on its own, let alone with, you know, you need some kind of device or something to get some leverage to actually crack. So it's a very strong natural material. So there you have it, Brutus. If you are new to Orto Parisi, start here. This is an easy um, fragrance that you can quickly fall in love with. There are some of the Orto Parisis, as I mentioned earlier, that are a lot more punchy. There's the musks have been amped up. There's some other notes in there that does create a little bit of, of instability, like what am I wearing? Whereas with Brutus, you can come into it, comfortably wear it, and know that you, you've got a really divine, very uh, complex, wonderfully evolving fragrance on. Love to hear your thoughts. Brutus, awesome inclusion in the Orto Parisi lineup. We'll see you guys all on the next installment.